Hey everyone and welcome to our Tuesday night Rock Your Health um, informational webinar with um, this is Jojo Bennington and we have Dr. Joshua Dunsky with us tonight who Dr. Dunsky is a chiropractic physician from Boston, Massachusetts with a thriving practice in Framingham, Mass. Um, he specializes in scoliosis and neuropathy and and um, several years ago we started working together when um, he was introduced to the product that we're going to talk about tonight and, and talk about how he's utilized it with his patients and, and what's happened for him and, and how he's incorporated it not just into his practice but also into his family, he uses it with his children and, and so um, I, uh, I welcome you on tonight Dr. Densky and I would love you to just take over. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Jojo, and thank you everybody for being on there tonight. Um, I love talking about this stuff. I love the science. I love what it's done. <clears throat> excuse me for my family, and I love what it's done for my practice. I've been practicing, like Jojo said, for 17 years using uh, high-level science and nutrition. <clears throat> excuse me, because it does go hand in hand. <clears throat> Pardon me. I've been talking all day in the clinic, and. Uh, my throat's a little dry here. Um, it goes hand in hand with getting patients well. You know, you can help someone's spine. You can treat their neuropathy, their scoliosis. You know, whatever is going on with them. But if if you're not putting the core elements inside someone for someone's cells to get healthy with and thrive on and become healthier and healthier, uh, <clears throat> it's the fuel that that allows that to happen. So um, I just want to dive right into this and and start telling you about what I found. Uh, four years ago, which really flipped everything around for us for, for um, a huge change in our lives. So let's talk about the situation first before we can talk about what we're doing now. Most people really have no idea um, what is really going on and why we're getting uh, sicker and sicker. In fact, we are uh, we spend the most amount of money on healthcare. We have the greatest doctors in the world, I feel. Um, all types of doctors, medical doctors, allopathic, western, eastern. Uh, we have some of the greatest doctors in the world, the greatest medicine in the world. But why are we becoming sicker and sicker and sicker? We are living longer, but does that mean we're necessarily living healthier? And and I, uh, I'm here to say that I don't think we are. And tonight, I want to talk about Tito's. <clears throat> Last week, we spoke about telomere research and the effects that has on our health and aging um, and, uh, and the overall course of our life. Today I want to go a little deeper into Tito's and that affects every single person on this webinar and every single person that you know. Tito's stands for toxicity, deficiency, overweight or obesity and stress. Okay, This is what I believe is the culprit is the reason why we are getting sicker and sicker. In fact, this is the first time that our children are not supposed to outlive us due to what's going on, to our chronic health crisis. It is unbelievable. In fact, for those of you that haven't heard this before, uh, think for a second. What do you think is the number one cause of death now? The number one cause of death. Most many of you would say heart disease or cancer. It's actually stress. Stress is the number one killer today. And the number one cause of stress, according to Stanford University, economic stress. Okay, I just want to throw that out there. I thought that was a, an interesting piece of information. But this is where we are. How is this happening? Back in 2008, we had one in four of our kids were sick. One in four of them. And now it's one in two. That number just started in 214, and it's even worse now. One in two children have some type of chronic illness. Okay, why is that happening? Why are they getting sicker? Why is obesity covering the United States right now? In fact, we used to be number one, the most obese country in the world. Mexico is now number one. We're number two and getting bigger and bigger. And 23 million children, this is what bothers me, this, out of all these numbers down here, 23 million children are obese in the United States. With the most amazing research and science that we have, we know what's going on. Why are our kids getting bigger and bigger? Cancer in the 50s over the age of 55 was 1 in 12. Now it's 1 in 2. Things aren't getting better. They're actually getting worse. Okay? <clears throat> and our food supply. You know, we're going to talk about all this stuff in, in the, the short amount of time we're on here tonight, about 25, 30 minutes here. But I'm going to bounce around a little bit. But our food supply, our food supply is killing us. And I'm going to show you that in a second. But I want you to see what experts, experts predict. Okay? By 2030, 42% of Americans will be obese. 
By 2050, we will have 100 million Americans diabetic. Di out, of, out of the, I probably did eight or nine, I, I did nine or ten consults last week. I'll tell you, about seven of them had diabetes, were type 2, that came in to see me. This is awful. This is what's going on right now. Why are we getting sicker? Why are we becoming larger and larger? Well, everybody wants to turn and point at obesity and the obese problem. But it's really not, and I'm, I want to I want to make this very clear. Metabolic syndrome is where 75% of all of our healthcare healthcare dollars are going. Metabolic syndrome does not affect only large people or obese people. It affects thin people or normal weight people. You cannot see metabolic syndrome, okay? And metabolic syndrome is basically basically the most dangerous heart attack risk factors, actually for stroke congestive heart failure also, diabetes, pre-diabetes, all these things you see up here. That's what metabolic syndrome is. This is what we see throughout the United States and in every uh, primary care physician's office, in every chiropractor's office, in every internist's office, it's the diabetes, the cholesterol, the blood pressure, the fatty liver disease. Do you know they recently autopsied um, uh, children who died prematurely, obviously prematurely, 13% of them had fatty liver disease. 13% fatty livers at young ages. How is this happening? Okay, and this is this is an MRI. I want to show you this because I find this very profound. This is called TOFI, and it stands for thin on the outside, fat on the inside. When I tell you, you can't look at someone and see if they're healthy or not healthy. You know, there are signs that we can see if someone's inflamed and, and probably not doing so well, but if you look at the circumference of this person, of person A, their belly is the same circumference as person B. But if you look inside this MRI, you'll see these dark spots. These are our organs, our spinal cord right there, our organs. You'll see the white haze. That white haze is visceral fat. Okay, Visceral fat is not the same as subcutaneous fat. Visceral fat is the fat that kills us. Visceral fat is the culprit behind high cholesterol, high blood pressure, diabetes, polycystic ovarian disease, all of those things that make up um, metabolic syndrome. So if I were to ask you, which person do you think is sicker? Person A with this amount of weight or person B? Well, now that you know that visceral fat is bad, you can see all of this visceral fat on an MRI. But globally looking at them, they have the same belly circumference. So we need to stop judging people the way they look and really want to judge them by what's going on inside. And I have the privilege to be able to do that because we do some functional medicine, we do some functional testing. I do have labs when people come in to see us, and it's quite astounding. Uh, it's amazing. But do you think obesity is a choice? Are you going to blame that person and point at that, that boy on the couch and say, that guy's, or that man on the couch, say, that guy's eating too much and he's exercising too little and he's shoving Diet Coke and Doritos in his mouth all day long and I don't feel bad for him? You know, a lot of people do that. Um, and I'm not saying uh, to take the, the responsibility away from the person, but it's more than just wanting to do that. We're talking about real chemicals in our food, real preservatives, excitatory chemicals, which make our brain say, wow, this McDonald's french fry tastes really good, when in fact it really doesn't. It's a chemical that's it's an excitatory chemical that's making us um, sense this and feel this. Okay, But if you think obesity is a choice, you have to be able to explain this, that we have an ep epidemic right now of obese six-month-old children. So that hypothesis that it's the person just sitting on his butt and it's his responsibility and it's his decision, that's actually not true. Uh, I don't believe that anymore, given the science that we have. There are real chemical deficiencies that are going on here. Okay? And in 1982, the American Heart Association, the American Medical Association, and the U.S. Department, uh, Department of Agriculture said, we need to take the fat out of the food. We're getting way too much fat. So they mandated we took the fat out of the food because the fat was making us sick. Well, guess what happened? Okay? Guess what happened to metabolic disease? It all went down, right? No. Metabolic disease not only went up, it significantly went up because it was never the fat. The fat was never the issue. You know what the issue was and is? It's always been the carbohydrates, the bad, I want to be very careful here, the bad carbohydrates. People I talk to on a regular basis say, oh, I'm on a carb-free diet. That's not good for you. Carbs are good for you, the good carbs, the complex carbohydrates, the bad carbs are bad. The refined sugars are bad. Okay, we used to get about 15 grams a day from the fresh fruits and vegetables picked from the earth. You know, when we walk around, we used to walk around without shoes on, 
and now adolescents get over 73 grams a day of sugar, and let me tell you, it's not the good sugar. It's the refined, ripped apart, denatured sugar that destroys our insides. It is literally poison, and anybody that doesn't think it's poison is just living a different life right now. With all the science and the research that we have, there's no question. It is a disaster, an absolute unmitigated disaster, says Dr. Lustig. The fat's going down, the sugar's going up, and every single one of us, including your kids, is getting sicker and sicker. Now, is sugar the only problem? No, and I'm not going to sit here and tell you it's the only problem, but it is a major, major problem. You look at the beverage intake, and I, you know, I feel bad for the parents. The parents are trying to do the right thing. They see an ad on television for drink my fruit juice, it's natural fruit juice. Okay? It's the biggest joke out there. Most fruit juices or fruit drinks are worse than sodas. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Now, if you were to consume this, this grid down here, this equation down here basically tells you that if you drink one can of soda a day, you're going to gain 15 and a half pounds of bad fat per year. I'm talking about that visceral fat. You know, a little fat on your handlebars, that's subcutaneous fat. We actually need some of that. It helps keep healthy hormone levels, etc. And I'm not going to go through every one of these bottles, but this is basically the, the chronicity and the lifetime of Coca-Cola. And I'm not just talking about Coke. I'm talking about all these other sodas out here too. But if you look over here, adolescents and adults, they're not just drinking one of these 20 ounces a day now. They're drinking two of these. Okay? If you drink one of these a day, you're going to gain 26 pounds of bad fat per year. Go to the movies ever? Look at this Thirst Buster. 44 ounces of, of, of pure sickness poured into your body for 30 cents more or 10 cents more will we'll supersize this. It's awful. 57 pounds of bad fat, fat per year. And this is what happened. This is where big business took over. The Coca-Cola conspiracy. What's the ma one of the major things in ingredients in Coke? Caffeine. What does caffeine do? It's a stimulant and it's a diuretic makes you pee free water and it stimulates you because everybody's exhausted dealing with work, the second job, the third job, the kids, all of the responsibilities, the stress, we need to stay awake. We need that stimulant, supposedly. And the diuretic is to dehydrate you and make you thirsty. Okay? They put salt in Coca-Cola. Why? Again, to dehydrate us. And lastly, and don't get me wrong, there's not just three ingredients here. We have some major, major chemicals that addict us and they're excitatory chemicals that stimulate parts of our brain like the hippocampus that makes us come back for more and sugar okay it's to hide the salt because we'd never be able to drink this garbage if it didn't taste sweet enough for us that's what's in coca-cola and basically what happened in 1985 was the coke conspiracy came out they designed new coke what really is new coke well yeah it's a brand new can that everybody got excited about nice looking can it's the thing to do is drink new coke but really what it was is more salt, more caffeine. They made hundreds of billions of dollars from this one decision. Great for them, not great for us, and not great for our kids. Let's talk a little bit about deficiency. I'm the first one to tell you that we should be getting our nutrition from our food. We don't. And anybody who thinks they do is just, again, they're, they're not looking at the science we have. <clears throat> I have at least two or three people every week that I see that sit across, sits across from my desk, and they say, well, I don't really believe in supplements because I eat organic and I exercise and I, I, I live a healthy life. Many of my sick, sick people are eating organic, and their minerals are declining in their body, their, their nutrition is declining, and they're getting sicker and sicker and sicker. And we can look at them on the inside and see this. But the science is out. We know that our soils are nutritionally stripped and bankrupt. They're destroyed from the herbicides and pesticides, from over-farming. We used to farm 40 bushels to the acre a few years ago. Now we farm 200 bushels to the acre. Do you know what that means? They're, every time you farm, you, you take the nutrition out of the soil. And they think in 80 years from now, we're going to be a big pile of dust. This isn't getting better. This is, this is headed right for the, that pile of dust. Every year it gets worse. So this blue line, this graph is from the United States Department of Agriculture. They're telling us the soils are declining. And, and they're showing us with this red line here, this is an, an increase in mineral deficiency diseases. Now, I owe you an apology. I, I have to change this over here. I said this last time, too. This 60 is actually 70. Okay? Our bodies need 70 minerals per day, per day, for proper neurological function, endocrine function, 
immune function, everything that happens in our body needs minerals. Minerals are called basically the catalysts of life, the spark plugs of life. They are responsible for turning everything on. In fact, if you're taking vitamins right now without minerals, you're, you're, you're consuming, basically you're, you're consuming nothing. You're expressing expensive urine is what you're doing. Minerals turn on the vitamins. It's literally the lock and key, and most people don't know this. No one talks about this, but minerals are the only way that those vitamins are turned on. C. Everett Koop, a few years ago, he served under Ronald Reagan, highly decorated pediatric surgeon, um, uh, ex-surgeon general of the United States. He believed at the time, before he passed away, that over 70% of all of our diseases were due to lack of nutrition. Over 70%. If he was alive today, and if he had the science we have today, he'd be saying that number is a lot higher. UCLA did a study and they found in 1953 that one bowl of spinach had enough iron to last us one week. We ate a bowl of spinach, we got one week's supply of iron. Well, we need 54 bowls of spinach today so for one week's supply of iron. So no one can come in and tell anybody that I eat organic, I get enough nutrition because you don't. It's not in the food. And they've proven now, we have 202 studies from the NIH I'm sorry, it's 202 studies from USA Today and NIH that show that our organic food is no healthier than inorganic food. It has less pesticide, it has less herbicides, but it doesn't have any more nutrition than organic food. Our food is absolutely bankrupt or very close. Okay, One orange from 1936 compares to the 8 to 12 oranges we need today. Okay, And an apple from 1976 is now 6 to 12 apples today. We need 12 apples today to equate to the nutrition from one apple in 1976. We are not, The purpose of food, everybody on this call, it's not just for fuel. Food passes on a genetic code to our genes. It's literally like maintaining a software program. You have to rerun uh, a program. You have to clean it. You have to defrag your computer. You have to support it. Genetic coding that comes in from the food supports our ongoing genetic coding that keeps us alive and healthy. Okay, So what happens when they genetically modified food? What do you think happens there? Does that affect our health? You better believe it. I still hear people say, I don't believe in that stuff. Well, you don't have to believe it, but science is real. Okay, And we know this now. And in 2012, um, the, with the Freedom of Information Act, we basically found out that the government was pretty much lying to us. They acknowledged that, oh yes, this food is actually harmful and no one should be consuming it. Well, guess what? It's 2016 and you can still buy genetically modified food. How is that lawful right now? How is that able to happen? That's what I don't understand. Okay? Here's a pH chart. The pH is basically our bodies need to be a certain pH. Homeostasis for humans happens around 7.25, meaning if we're too acidic down here, the low numbers, the red numbers, and purple, our body can't func can't, cannot function right and we actually can die. We don't want to be way too alkaline either, too high is no good. We want to be around 7.25 or a little over 7.25 depending who you talk to now. Um, but there are certain things we do every day that get us and make us sicker and sicker. In fact, most of the diseases we know of thrive in a high acidic environment and actually some of those processes it's very hard for them to exist in a high alkaline state. Okay, But what do we do on a regular basis? There are things up here that I'm showing you right now, such as NutraSweet, Equal, Aspartame, chemicals. Chemicals and preservatives in our food, not just sweeteners. Those are awful. Those are deadly. We know that. But chemicals that preserve foods, if you're eating anything that has preservatives in it, chances are you're eating chemicals that's making you sicker. I want to show you something here before someone asks a question at the end. Yes, there's turkey on here. Yes, there's lamb and chicken. I'm not saying never eat these things. I like beef. We just had filet mignon Saturday night. You know, that's fine. Um, I don't eat it every day. But you definitely want to modify it because we talk about eating 80% alkaline food and 20% acid food acid food. So we need some of the acid foods. Yes, we do. We want that homeostasis. But if you're consuming white sugar or flour or bread or, or uh, white rice, all of these things, white sugar is a very, very acidic component, by the way. And it's very inflammatory. You're going to be off kilter. And let me tell you, most people are 95% acidic foods, 5% or less alkaline foods. 
that's one of the reasons why we're getting sicker and sicker, and I'm about to show you why. So what happens when you walk by someone smoking a cigarette? Your, your blood, your saliva, your urine, your, your tissue becomes more acidic immediately. Okay? So the body has these beautiful capabilities of regulating itself and keeping it alive. If these capabilities and regulation systems weren't in place, we would die from a simple ingestion of cigarette smoke or the simple ingestion of acidic foods or acidic drinks or other chemicals. But we have this amazing ability to stay alive. So what happens when you walk by someone smoking a cigarette? You become acidic. Your brain is so intelligent, it sends a message to your, um, your immune system. Um, to grab calcium car bicarbonate out of the bones and pull the calcium out of the bones to buffer our body to bring that level back up as close to homeostasis as, as um, possible. Now you drink soda with phosphorus in it, highly acidic. We dip down again into the acidic region. How does the body regulate it? It pulls calcium again out of the bones to, to bring that pH back up. Coffee. Now, thankfully, we now have coffee that's alkaline coffee and really, really healthy coffee. Coffee, regular coffee, although it has some really um, positive uh, components to it and healthy components like antioxidants, it's very, very acidic. In fact, some coffees, coffees are 2.5. So every time you take a sip of coffee in the morning or in the afternoon or at night, you're becoming very acidic. Your body has to leach more calcium out of the bones to buffer the blood to bring that pH back up. Thankfully, because I'm a coffee lover, we have alkaline coffee now, and we don't have to worry about that wrecking our pH. So if you drink coffee, go get some coffee that's alkaline. There are a few companies that make it out there. Of course, I love the one that, uh, uh, the one that we use right now. Um, but that's very important. Osteoporosis, for those of you that don't know what it is, osteoporosis is a bone demineralization disease. Everybody thinks it's an 80-year-old woman. Well, let me tell you, I have women in their late 20s that are osteopenic. It's the state before osteoporosis. And we have people in their 30s, women in their 30s that are osteoporotic. And it's not just women anymore. We have men in their 40s and 50s that have osteoporosis. Why? Because we live such an acidic environment. Many of the medications that are out there, although may be needed for certain things, are very acidic. So everybody's popping Tums and Prilosec and Omeprazole, and it's just making this whole thing a lot worse. I, I can't get into that right now due to lack of time, but I can tell you what antacids do to us, and it's not good. Short-term use, yes, they can keep us alive if you have a bleeding ulcer. Long-term use, not good. It, the, the manufacturers will tell you themselves. But this is the world that we live in. This poor kid, every time I show this up here, it's awful. I hate showing this slide, but it's so powerful. This kid is probably already type 2 diabetic. He probably already has high, pl uh, high blood pressure. You know, and, and McDonald's offering a meal to, a, to parents who can barely keep the lights on at $2.75 when they do these specials or $5 or $6. Of course I don't blame them. They barely have enough money to survive. But we've destroyed the entire world now. Over in Japan and China with the industrialized diet and the Americanized diet, we've brought our fast food all over the world to make everybody sick. Are they making a lot of money? Yes, they are, but people are getting a very sick from it. And we used to think back when we drank, when we, excuse me, we took a big breath of fresh air, a, a Montana air, a Colorado air, you got healthy from that. You drank clean, good clean water, you got healthy from that. You ate good clean food, you got healthy from that. And that's okay because our poisons, no problem. They were kept under the kitchen sink, locked up, and little Johnny couldn't get it. Well, that's the furthest from the truth because it's not just locked up under the sink. In fact, it is everywhere. We can't get away from it. Our food is poisoned. Everything we put in our mouths is poisoned, basically. We have to be so diligent these days. It's very, very difficult. You know, It's very, very difficult to live a healthy life. I get it. But we're going to offer some suggestions and some things that we see in ourselves. And now we're, we're, we're utilizing this program through 13 countries in the world now. Powerful. Mount Sinai School of Medicine have proven we have over 167 deadly toxins, deadly toxins that live inside each one of us. And this is the world we live in. 80,000 new industrial chemicals in our air, in our water, in our food since World War II. World War II. And you know what? They've only actually tested, I was about 10 to 15 of these chemicals on humans. We don't even know what the majority of these do.
CNN did a very, very upsetting stud study. It's good that they did it, but it is upsetting. They tested babies. They actually tested the umbilical cords of beautiful newborn baby girls and baby boys to see what their toxicity was at birth. And not one, not two, but each and every single one of these children had over 250 industrial chemicals inside them at birth. Okay, so I ask you, do you think this may have something to do with how sick we are? Just might? Might. And you can decide. I think it does. I think it does. And people still think we don't have to supplement. Okay, and that's okay if you don't believe we, we need to. We need to. The problem is the public is confused. Anybody can open up their own nutrition store. We see them all over the place and use sinful ingredients. I'll just come on and say it. Some of these ingredients, the, the LA Times did a study and they pulled 23 of the most common, the most common supplements off the shelves, and only three of them had inside the bottle what was on the label. Only three. Because the FDA does not recommend any nutritional supplements or nutraceuticals. They get involved when someone gets injured or there are false claims being made. You know? But yet, I'm going to give my kids Flintstones or I'm going to take Centrum. Every day I see someone who takes Centrum. There's no place for petroleum products or hydrogenated oils in the body, period. There is no place, I'm going to say this again, for, for petroleum products or hydrogenated oils in our body. It makes us sick, but people still give it to their kids and they take it themselves. We have solutions for that. Okay? This is an x-ray of undigested centrum. They can come up with the most, bio, the most unavailable phytonutrients and call it vitamin C, vitamin D. The quality has everything to do and the delivery has everything to do with these with, with you getting the nutrition. So let's get down to it. Let's cut to the chase. What do we do? What do we do right now? Okay, well, I'll tell you what we don't do. According to the NIH, diets out there have a 98% failure rate, but everybody keeps doing them. They keep doing diets. Okay, I'm not going to do that one because I've done this one 14 times. Well, if you've done it 14 times, it obviously doesn't work. And it doesn't work because it was never designed to work, because their philosophy is all wrong and the technology is wrong. The dieting industry is a $50 billion industry with a 98% failure rate. But more importantly, let's look at the 23 million children that are obese and are dying, and we absolutely have control over this. There's some things we don't have, over, we don't have control over. We do have control over that. So the solution is, this, uh, let's talk about the solution right now. It's based on real science, real research, and most importantly, results. When I tell people, put it in your mouth, try the program. If you don't like it, send it back. The company sends you your money back. I don't sell this in the office. Patients have to go right to this company. We're going to talk about isogenics now. There are other good companies out there. But I will tell you this, the majority are not. And you can look right into their ingredients and find out for yourselves. They're using synthetic chemicals, non-bioavailable chemicals. They're using ingredients that I do not believe are healthy for us. And you can see right away. Isogenics is the program I want to talk to you about. It does not treat, cure, or prevent any illness or disease. This, is, this webinar is for training purposes only. And these, these supplements and these uh, statements have not been recommended or um, endorsed by the FDA, like I said before. They don't recommend or endorse any nutrition. But this is our program. We want to, first of all, get rid of the sugary products from your kids, period. Gatorade is the worst culprit out there, and we can talk about that later. We do a deep cellular cleanse. It is not a colon cleanse. You're not running to the bathroom every two seconds. It is a metabolic cellular cleanse that removes the toxins from every cell in our body, not just our digestive system. Okay, we want to talk about infusing with minerals, probiotics, but also prebiotics. People overlook this. It's not just the probiotics. You need prebiotics, and I'll talk about that in a second. pH, reducing inflammation, restoring the gluts, guts flora. Ladies and gentlemen, you are not what you eat. You are what you absorb. I have to make that very clear. You are what you absorb. You can eat really, really healthy, but if your gut is not working properly, you're not going to absorb the nutrients, period. And we prove this every day. Okay? This is a nutritional fasting program, but let me get this very clear to you. We are not starving the body. Diets, when you go on a caloric restrictive program, you're starving the body. Any diet out there, you're starving the body, which causes bone demineralization and muscle wasting. That is not what this is. We are infusing every single day the nutrition 
that your body needs. That is why people come out healthier. That is why when you put an athlete on this nutritional fasting program, they build lean muscle. We've proven it. We have studies to show it. We have an institute that took triathletes and proved it. If we were starving the body, you would not be able to gain lean muscle. Okay? We are infusing the body with massive amounts of nutrition. So what's in my toolbox? Here we go. We use a specialized juice. Okay? And I'm just going to jump. I know time's right. I'm kind of trying to keep this short. Yes, this program uh, is a chelating program. And by the way, the company didn't invent these ingredients. Mother Nature has been giving it to the earth and to people for millions of years. We have just put it in a bottle. We work with a phenomenal acupuncturist who used to make these incredible potions and she would she would make these drinks herself with all of these roots and herbs and they didn't taste that good. And guess what? She uses this program now completely, thoroughly, and, 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 and solely because it comes with everything in it, everything we need. This specialized juice, the main component is the inner heart gel of the aloe vera plant. And I want to tell you something about the, the attention to detail this company provides. Most companies will take the entire aloe plant, and what they do is they, they, they um, I'm, th I'm at a loss for, for words here, they grind down the entire plant, leaves and all. The problem is the goodness, the polysaccharides are toxin hunters. These poly polysaccharides destroy harmful chemicals that live in our fat, okay? The problem is in the, in the leaf of the plant, we, there are enzymes that inactivate polysaccharides. So what does this company do? Does well, excuse me, my English is horrible. <laughs> what does this company do? They take off the leaves and grind down just the plant, so they're getting 100% of those polysaccharides. That's why we're able to rid the body or allow the body to get rid of these harmful toxins. It's also infused with minerals and other phenomenal botanicals, a yellow dock, burdock root that cleanses and cleans the body. Okay. Ionic Supreme, it's probably one of the most important things that we do in our bodies. I want you to think of Norton Antivirus. What does Norton Antivirus do for your computer? It rummages through the hard drives and cleans out the garbage. Okay, It defrags our disks. Powerful antibacterial, powerful antiviral. It has all the trace minerals, over 200 adaptogens. Adaptogens know where your body's supposed to be. Adaptogens are herbs that de-stress the body, literally powerful. And what's the world's most perfect food? Mother's breast milk. Mother's breast milk is made up of 60% whey protein, 40% milk protein. Okay. And I want to tell you about the finest protein in the world is New Zealand whey protein. What we've been able to do is bottle up the finest protein in the world, undenatured whey. When it says undenatured whey, it means that whey is not cooked at high temperatures. So the, those bonds, those peptide bonds are not broken. What that means is you're getting the nutritional value. You're not getting the garbage. You know, I'm not for dairy products. I think they cause a lot of problems. This isn't that. This is the whey extracted from the dairy products. And there's a lot of misinformation out there about whey. Whey is very good for you. There's a lot of phenomenal health benefits to whey. The problem is if you go to one of your local stores, um, most of the, the protein in whey you buy from the United States is cooked at high temperatures because it's very cheap to do that. And you're getting the garbage, not only the garbage, but they're destroying the nutritional value of that whey. So it doesn't do what this does. Okay? And by the way, grass-fed cows from New Zealand are not fed any antibiotics. They're not injected anti antibiotic steroids, hormones, any of those garbages, uh, any of that garbage. Another major component of undenatured whey is cysteine. Cysteine is a powerful toxin hunter along with the polysaccharides. Why is this important? We need to get rid of the garbage, I said. We need to get rid of the fat-soluble toxins. Many people think that if they juice, I'm going to juice, I'm going to get healthy and detox. Well, they're not wrong. They are detoxing, they are juicing, but they're getting rid of water-soluble toxins. Your body can do that. It cannot get rid of fat-soluble toxins because the way the body stays alive in starvation is that it makes more fat. In fact, the American Society of Endocrinologists named these fat cells that are produced to grab the toxins that can kill us and keep us safe by making visceral fat. Cysteine and the polysaccharides, they break down those harmful toxins safely so our liver and kidneys can get rid of it. And prebiotics, let's talk about this now because no one talks about prebiotics. Prebiotics is the food that allows your body to produce its own probiotic or its own flora.
So you don't just want to infuse probiotics, you need prebiotic fiber, and that's in this program too. This is why our people are getting healthy very, very quickly. When you go in a, as this diagram shows right here, a caloric restrictive diet, you lose, the fat cell gets smaller. So what happens is since we know the toxins live in our fat, the, the toxins come out, and the brain sends a signal to the liver to make more fat. This is what rebound is. So when you see someone lose a lot of weight very quickly on a caloric restrictive program, look at them three months later, four months later, six months later. They 98% they of the time will have rebound. They'll be fatter or larger or more obese than they were before because the body's trying to stay alive. Versus a cleansing or a nutritional fasting program seen down here, we don't go after the fat, we go after the toxins. When you go after the toxins, the fat comes off, period. Um, due to time right now, I think I need to fly through this research. I'm just going to show you, this is published research that shows people on the 30-day isogenics program have two times the decrease of visceral fat, proven, compared to people eating healthy. Here's a published MRI that shows less visceral fat after the isogenics 30-day program, okay? Um, I'm gonna, I already talked about the Colgan Institute. I really want to keep this to a short webinar. Um, the athletes gain 3% more lean muscle mass going through this program. So in conclusion, what is this program? We are not processing these ingredients at high rates or high levels to destroy their nutritional value. What we are doing, or what this company did, I wish it was my company, it's not. I utilize them because I truly believe there's no other program that can give us everything in one place. Uh, there are other good companies, but I think this really, for what we need, I'm convinced, no question. We are enhancing what Mother Nature has given us. We are giving back to the food what, there, what has been for 100 million, of year, 100 million years. We're giving back the food what was supposed to be in the food. And like I said before, it's not just fats, carbs, and proteins, but food, by definition, carries genetic information to our genes. We do a shake for breakfast, a shake for dinner, have a healthy lunch for five to six days, and then we do two days of nutritional fasting. That is the outline version of our 30-day program. Okay? The, get back with the person who invited you on here. Um, I don't even know if we have time for questions. I'll leave that up to JoJo. We, uh, we just hit 36 minutes, I think. Um, we can certainly take questions if you want, but that's the outline. A shake in the morning, shake for dinner, healthy lunch, five to six days, two days of nutritional fasting. And Jojo, I'll, I'll turn things back to you. I tried to get through this as quickly as possible. I hope I didn't uh, go too fast. I do know we're recording it, so um, Jojo can get that to you for anybody who wants. Hmm, thank you, Josh. No, that was great. Um, it, it was quick. It was perfect. I think that we got the gist of it out and and everyone understands. So I, I we have time for questions. Um, if you have a few minutes, sure do. I want to respect your time also. So if you guys have any questions, you can type them into the question box, and um, I'll be able to relay them over. Or if you just want to give kudos or a shout out or um, have a comment, whatever you want to say, that would be great. I guess you did a really clear job. Wow. <laughs> no questions tonight. <laughs> awesome. Um, That's okay. Anna said, great webinar. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Anna. Deanna DeWitt says, thank you, Dr. Dunsky. You rock. Thank you, awesome. Deanna. Thank you, Thank you, all. Lisa Larson. Thank you. Your sister even gave you kudos. <laughs> no way. I must have done a good job. <laughs> um, is there a way to share? Yes. I will. Um, it, it takes a little while to process the webinar. It's a little bit different than a conference call since we have all the images. So I will get it processed. It'll take, uh, it takes several hours to do, but I'll post it up on the, on the Rock Your Health page, and you'll be able to have the link so they can go in and view it. You bet, and Anna, there's, um, you know, you could use the one from tonight, and I know that we, we did this same one a couple of weeks ago. If you want to go back and utilize that one, there's, in the files on the Rock Your Health page, there's, um, there's a link already there.
Teresa Lucero said, thank you, great webinar. Thank you, thank you. All right, guys, well, if you feel complete and you don't have any questions, I think we're good to go for tonight, and um, we will be back next week. And I believe we will be talking about telomeres. So that will be um, Tuesday, uh, 5 o'clock Pacific, 8 o'clock Eastern. And you can use the same link that you were given tonight, and it will work to redirect you right back here. So we want to thank you for being on tonight. Thank you so much for all of your knowledge and wisdom and amazing explanations, Dr. Densky. And um, have a great night, everybody. Thank you, and thank you, JoJo, for organizing this. We appreciate it. Yeah. All right, guys, go rock your life. Have a great night. <laughs>